For many endurance sports, they're the ultimate test of human performance, where every 1% improvement can make all the difference in the outcome. It's the responsibility of anti-doping authorities around the world to ensure that these 1% improvements fall within the guidelines of what constitutes fair and competitive sport. We hear about in endurance sport media all the time professional athletes being subject to anti-doping control measures, but are sanctions and testing only at the professional level or are all athletes covered by anti-doping policy? When we talk about anti-doping here in Australia, first we need to think about two major organisations. The first one is WADA, or the World Anti-Doping Agency, which sets out a unified approach as established by the WADA code to anti-doping for a number of sports across the world. The second organisation we look at is ASADA, so the Australian Sports Anti-Doping Authority, which oversees a Australian approach to that policy. So it's attempting to engage, deter, detect and enforce anti-doping policy to protect the health of Australian athletes by minimising the risk of doping, but also upholding the integrity of Australian sport. Both WADA and ASADA take a non-discriminatory approach to ensuring the integrity of sport via anti-doping policy. This means that any athlete, regardless whether they're a professional, age grouper, uh, sub-elite, amateur level, may be subject to anti-doping throughout the course of their performance career. On your screen now is the list straight from the ASADA website outlining the criteria for registered testing for athletes who may be subject to possible doping control measures. The criteria includes physical demands of the sport, injury, withdrawal from expected competitions, behaviour that indicates doping, sudden major improvements in performance, the athlete's performance history and reliable information from third party sources. Anti-doping codes are covered by what's called strict liability. Therefore, that means that any athlete who is found with a banned substance in their system is solely responsible for that banned substance being in their system. It, even if you are taking a supplement that you don't know what's in it, it's still down to you if you have that substance that's picked up during a doping control test. In Australia, about 50% of doping violations are the result of athletes taking supplements that they were unaware had other things in them other than what was on the label. So it's really important to check what's in your supplements, what's in what you are ingesting into your body, because at the end of the day, you are responsible. We'll put some links in the description on where you can find some more information about the names of things that are on the banned list. I'll put the link to the ASADA website down below and also another website to check all the substances and what category they fall in within the doping code. So for any more information regarding anti-doping, you can check out the ASADA and WADA websites. I'll leave the link in the description below, so go check that one out. Also check out your national sporting organisation's website. So for example, Triathlon Australia have their anti-doping policy freely available up on their website. So you can check those ones out, they're a really good resource for, to see what applies to you in your sport. Um, and it's going to be most specific to you, so you can see what the, what the process is in regards to anti-doping control for your endurance sport. Other than that, we look forward to seeing you all competing out there in fair sport and doing your bit to uphold the integrity of Australian sport.